Welcome to the Jamestown First Baptist Church Worship Hour. Established in 1930, the First Baptist Church has been instrumental in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ across the Cumberland Mountains. An aggressive local missions program has assisted in establishing sister churches in Fentress County, the Pickett State Park area, and Morgan County. With programs to minister to the individual and the family, we invite you to join with us in our live worship service. his house here this morning and uh, looking forward to uh, VBS this week it starts in the morning at 9 o'clock we run through 9 to 12 each day and we're excited about that and we're expecting a lot of uh, children to be with us and you be much in prayer for them as, and, the, and the teachers and uh, let's just pray that uh, it'll be a wonderful VBS this year and uh, that God would just have his way in these children's hearts while we have them for uh, for a week and we're excited about that uh, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer th this morning and uh, let's just ask God to uh, bless in the service here today. Father, we come to you today. We thank you and praise you, God, for another day you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for uh, you loving us. We ask you, Father, that you would just uh, bless today, my Heavenly Father. We ask you, God, that you would just uh, uh, be with each and every person, God, here this morning. We just ask you, Lord, that you would just bless them, dear Father, we pray. and ask you, God, that you would just give us what we need today. And, uh, Father, we just praise you. We thank you, Lord, for all things, God, that you do. This we ask in your wonderful holy name. Amen. Amen. I'll ask Brother Mike to come and read some scripture this morning. Okay, we're reading out of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Again, verses 13 and 14. But I do not want to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, that you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring him with him those who sleep in Jesus. Will men please come forward? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this house, Lord. We thank you for the beautiful weather outside, Lord. And, and Lord, we just want to ask you to have a blessing on the Vacation Bible School this week. Uh, Lord, just be with us, Lord, each and every day that uh, we're in your house, Lord. We ask you to uh, bring bless the uh, tithes and offerings that be offered here today, Lord, and that they will be used to being uh, glory and honor to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. going to be singing around the campfire today. <laughs> Let's all stand as we're going to praise him. Amen. 
is going to do a song I've written by Lavelle Cheryl. The song that's kind of meaningful for me for the past. Uh, back in 1982, some of you weren't around then, uh, my girls were nine and six, two of my two oldest girls, and they come up to me one Sunday and they had a quartet that they made. And the quartet was them and another nine and six year old boys that they had met from church. And they come up and did this song in a quartet. And I love the song, love the meaning. It's got a great meaning about us standing on a rock. Uh, it's kind of hard for me because 12 years later, those two boys were killed in an auto accident. Coming home from Ohio University, they were in the marching band, and a truck ran a red light and killed them both. And uh, it was really a moving service. But I've kept a copy of this song for all those years. And I just love it. So share with me from this memory, My Foot's on the Rock. Now I 
I started out to win this race To serve the Lord, look upon His face Well, the way's been long and the way's been rough But there is one thing for sure, I've got my mind made up You see my foot's on the rock and my mind's made up Though I walk through the lonely valley, though I drink from the bitter cup When the devil comes knocking, showing me another way I stand right square on my feet, I throw my head in the air I look him straight in the eye, I say my foot's on the rock And my mind's made up Now Job was a man, he was gentle every way The devil took his family, he lay sick night and day His wife came and said, curse God you've had enough He said you talk like a foolish woman, I've got my mind made up you see, my foot's on the rock, and my mind's made up. Though I walk the lonely valley, though I drink from the bitter cup, when the devil comes knocking, showing me another way, I stand right square on my feet. I throw my head in the air. I look him straight in the eye. I say, my foot's on the rock, and my mind's made up. You see, my foot's on the rock, and my mind's made up. Though I walk the lonely valley, though I drink from a bitter cup, when the devil comes and knocks, he's showing me another way. I stand right square on my feet, I throw my head in the air, I look him straight in the eye, I say my foot's on the rock, and my mind. And start clip. Can you turn it up a lot more? I can't hear it. <laughs> Let's try this song again, okay? I can't, I can't hear it, Cliff. One more time. Wow. I want to get on this song. There. Well, I started out to win this race. To serve the Lord. Look upon His face. Well, the way's been long and the way's been rough. But there is one thing for sure, I've got my mind made up. I've got my foot on the rock, and my mind's made up. Though I walk the lonely valley, though I drink from the bitter cup, when the devil comes and I'll be showing me another way. I stand right square on my feet, I throw my head in the air, I look him straight in the eye, I say my foot's on the rock, and my mind's made up. Now Job was a man who was gentle in every way. The devil took his family, he lay sick night and day. His wife came and said, curse God, you've had enough. He said, you talk like a foolish woman, I've got my mind made up. You see, my foot's on the rock and my mind's made up. Though I walk through the lonely valley, though I drink from a bitter cup. When the devil comes and knocking, showing me another way. I stand right, I throw my, I look him, I say my, and my mind's made up. I stand right, and my mind's made up. Though I walk through the lonely valley, though I drink from the bitter cup. When the devil comes and knocking, showing me another way. I stand right, I throw my, I look him, I say my, I stand right, I throw my, I look him, I say my, I stand right, I throw my, I look him, I say my, and my mind made up, when the devil comes and knocking, showing me another way. I say my foot's on the rock and my mind's made up. I'm no longer a stranger to fear. Let's all stand. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. 
was shed for us that washes us as white as snow no matter what we've done in our life blood has washed us clean thank you jesus amen
I guess I'm supposed to follow that. I'm going to start preaching first and let them sing last. I'll tell you what, we've got a wonderful choir, don't we? And, uh, well, that would really, that would, that would really throw a cog in things. We'd done something different, wouldn't it? <laughs> Sung last and preached first. Uh, it'd be hard to get used to that, wouldn't it? Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad that I know the one that I'm trusting this morning, aren't you? Amen. And, uh, uh, boy, I just enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed those songs this morning. And uh, it's good to see this, uh, uh, this wonderful number with us this morning. And... Uh, I tell you what, some of you put on your best when you come to church. Uh, well, you all look good. Uh, you do. You look good. Uh, I, I, I knew somebody would have to say something and spoil it all. All right. Uh, I don't need your glasses. All right. Uh, I may in a few years, but I don't need them right now. All right. Let's look in the Word of God this morning. Uh, let's look together this morning in 1 Thessalonians, uh, what Brother Mike read this morning. 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter number 4. Let's look together this morning in the Word of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, and I will read uh, verses 13 again, and I'm going to read down through the remainder of the chapter. He said, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. I want to just interject a thought. This is not part of the message. But I want you to look here this morning and just uh, by way of thought this morning. And notice what the Bible says in verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Those that have preceded us, as we would say, in death, the Bible says that the saint of God is just asleep, what he's referring to. And the Bible says here in verse 13, he says that God will bring with him. I want to just say this this morning. The only way that God could bring those that have preceded us in death with Him, they would have to be with Him. So I want to tell you this morning, if you've got a, a saved loved one that has gone on to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says to be absent here is to be present with Him. And I want to tell you this morning about the way of the Word of God. He says that God will bring with the Lord Jesus Christ when He comes back. Boy, that's comforting words. Amen. Verse 13, or verse 16. For the Lord himself, he's not going to send somebody else, but he's going to come back himself personally to get his church. He said, he shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. He concludes it in verse 18. He says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Oh, isn't that good? Amen. Father, we thank you this morning. We just praise you today, Father, for... What we've already heard this morning. And I ask you, Father, that you would just help us for just a few minutes this morning. I pray, Father, that you would help us, God, just to be a blessing to your people here this morning. And I pray, God, that you would just use us in a way, God, that would magnify and exalt our Savior. God, may we lift him up in this place as we already have this morning. Father, we just thank you, we praise you, God, for everything that you do. 
for you're worthy of the praise. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to have to be kind of <coughs> still up here this morning for... Uh, I don't know if you realized it, but somebody was talking, Gary was saying how they was gathered around the campfire. I was just amazed they was walking on water. <laughs> I mean, we've got, some, we've got some saints of God here. This morning. <laughs> Peter didn't have nothing on them. You know, a lot of times we, we as a family, we get ready to go, go somewhere, whether it's to church or or some other event, and I will, I will announce to the family, or my wife will announce to the family, we're leaving at 7 o'clock. And uh, whenever I say that, usually it's two hours prior to the time that we're leaving. We're leaving at 7 o'clock. Be ready, we're leaving. And I'll make that announcement sometimes, many times, <laughs> over again before it gets 7 o'clock. I will say we're leaving at 7 then when it gets closer to the hour, the time that we're leaving, I'll, I'll say, you need to be in the vehicle at 7 o'clock, we're leaving. <laughs> and you know, as a, as a father, I, I try to be as lenient as I can. And uh, sometimes it's, it may be 5 minutes after 7, or it could possibly be even 10 minutes after 7 before we get gone. But I make the announcement just to tell them that we're leaving. We're getting ready to pull out and we're getting ready to leave and if you're going with us, you better get in the van. <laughs> and uh, it's amazing how that uh, the last few minutes of preparing to leave, they do most of those things in the last few minutes. <laughs> we're leaving. We're getting ready to go. I want to tell you this morning that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is coming again. Yeah. Uh, he's coming back and he's not gonna he's not gonna make an announcement that he's that he's coming at seven o'clock. Right. He's not gonna be lenient and say, Well, if you're if it's just a little bit late, I'll wait till five after. But we're leaving. This this ride's a taking off. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask you this morning, are you going Amen. when he does come? Are you, are you going? Are you prepared when Jesus Christ does come? He's not going to make a public announcement to the world, although He could, but He's not going to according to the Word of God. But He's not going to make a public announcement and say, be ready at 7 because I'm coming back. Although the, the signs show that Jesus could come back at any moment and we're still lagging behind and we're not ready. We still think that we can make those last minute preparations and He's going to wait on us because that He loves us. Because the Bible says that He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. He wants everybody to be saved. He's going to wait on me, preacher. He's patient. Oh, He is patient. The Bible says that He's long-suffering. Long-suffering with us. But I believe that the long suffering of God one day will play out and Jesus Christ will come back as the Bible said here in chapter 4 that He Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And He's going to come back and get us. Yeah. Now this event here that He's talking about, it's not talking about Jesus Christ coming back to the earth in this event. But the Bible says that we will meet the Lord in the air, right? right? And he says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. He says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I want to tell you this morning, are you ready to go? Are you ready to go when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back? I want to talk to you this morning. First of all, there's, a, there's a, a few participants that are involved in this event when Jesus Christ comes back. There's a, there's a few people that are involved in this event here in chapter 4. First and foremost, we see that the one that's involved is none other than the Lord Himself, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. While he was here on this earth, Jesus 
said in Matthew 24 and 29, which I think it's very important that you see this, but he said in, in Matthew 24, 29, immediately after the tribulation, he said in those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven, the Bible says, with power and great glory. And He shall send His angels with a sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together His elect from the four winds and from the end of heaven to the other. Now what Jesus is saying here in, in Matthew chapter 24 is not what Paul's saying here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. What, Je what Jesus is saying here in Matthew 24, He's talking about this second advent, the second time that the Lord Jesus Christ will come back and rule and reign here upon this earth. But Jesus is saying here, in, or Paul's saying here in 1 Thessalonians, that the Lord Jesus Christ shall descend from heaven with a shout, and we're going to meet Him in the air. Not like it is in Matthew 24. The Bible says that He shall come back to this earth according to Matthew 24. And he, the Bible says that He shall rule and reign. Jesus is not going to send an angel to get us. Jesus is not going to send Gabriel to get us. He's not going to send somebody else, although that He could. But the Bible says that the Lord Jesus Christ Himself is going to come back and get us. And not only that, but I find in this passage that I read before you this morning... I want to tell you this morning, not only is Jesus coming back, but the Bible says that we're going to meet Him in the air. Not only are we going to meet Him in the air, but we're going to meet all those that pre preceded us in death that are saved by the grace of God. We're going to meet them in the sky. Amen. I, if I wasn't a Baptist this morning, I'd probably get excited. <laughs> but I want to tell you this morning, are you going when He comes? Everybody thinks they're going. You never hardly ever meet anybody that don't think that they're going when Jesus comes. Everybody thinks they're going because, hey preacher, I've got my name on the roll up there. Oh, where are you at? Yeah. I've not seen you since I've been here. I want to tell you, if you fall in love with Jesus like I'm in love with Jesus, you'll be wanting to assemble together with other believers in Christ. You'll be wanting to worship Him in spirit and in truth. I want to tell you, if you love Jesus, you'll fall in love with Jesus and you'll stay with Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I love Him more than my wife. Amen. I love Him more than my children. I love Him more than anything in, in this life, Brother Henry. I love Jesus. He's first and foremost in my life. And He wants to be first and foremost in your life. Amen. A lot of times the only time that we're faithful is during the season that we want to be faithful. We just come whenever it's convenient for us. Well, I, I've got to do something today, preacher. You, you just don't know how busy I am. Oh, oh, I do know how busy you are. We're all busy. We're all busy, folks. We're, we're all busy. We all, have our, we all have our life to live and we're all doing things. But I want to tell you, if you're too busy for God, you're too busy. That's right. Amen. The Bible says on the first day of the week, we're, we're supposed to gather, we're supposed to assemble together. The Bible says on the first day of the week, I'm not very smart, and you probably already know that. But according to, my, according to my calendar, the first day of the week is Sunday. That's when our, that's when our week starts, right? Yeah. It goes from Sunday to Saturday, right? But I want to tell you, are, are you going when He comes? And a lot of people think they're going, and they're really not. Saddest verse in the entire Bible, I believe, is when Jesus said, Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils in thy name? Have we not done many wonderful works in thy name? Jesus will say to them, Depart from me, you that worketh iniquity. He said, For I knew you last week. Oh, I, I knew you for a few days. Is that what it says? 
I know you for a little while and then it's just like that you just uh, wasn't a Christian anymore. You didn't want to live for me. Jesus didn't say that. He said, depart from me, you that worketh iniquity. He said, I never knew you. In other words, Jesus said, you never was saved. That's right. well, wouldn't that be some sad words? Yes. Wouldn't that be some sad words to hear from the Lord Jesus Christ when He comes back? He said, it's not going to be just a few people hears that. But He said, many will hear in that day. Many people will. We see here in this passage that the Savior, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, is involved. He's coming back and, and it will be accompanied by a shout, the Bible says in this passage. Jesus promised that this would, there would come a day that the dead would hear His voice. John 5, 25, He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, He said, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear, He said, shall live. Not everybody's going to hear His voice. He said, those that hear His voice, He said, He said, they're the ones that's going to live. They're the ones that's going to have eternal life. He said, behold, I show you a mystery in 1 Corinthians 15. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. I want to tell you this morning, are you ready when He comes? I'm asking you that. Are you ready when Jesus Christ comes with a shout? Are you ready when Jesus Christ comes and we, and we hear the Bible says, the trumpet of God? Can you imagine what that's going to sound like? Can you imagine that the Bible says that He's going to come back with a shout and with a trump of God? I don't know what it's going to sound like, but I want to tell you we'll hear it. Yeah. We'll hear the trump of God. And I want to tell you this morning, those that... Those that hear the trump of God, we're going to be caught up out of this place. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be snatched away. We're going to lose gravity. And we're going, to, we're going to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. Boy, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the trump of God. I'm excited about the shout. Do you know the trump of God in many places in the Bible? It was used through Jewish history. The trumpet was used in many different ways for very important reasons that it was used. It was used to sound the alarm during time of war. It was used to assemble a crowd. It was used to make a great announcement. They would sound the trumpet. I believe it's about ready for God Himself to sound the trumpet. Because I believe that there's a great assembly that's going to be called up to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. We see here that the Savior is involved in this passage. But not only that, but I see that the saints involved in this passage this morning. When the rapture takes place, it will involve all those who have been saved by the grace of God. That's it. All those that have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that's the people that it's going to involve in the rapture of the church. Those that have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I want to ask you again. Are you ready when He comes? Are you ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ when He comes? Oh, He's going to come back. I want to, there's two statements that need to be made right, right here. I want to make two statements. The rapture will include all the saints. The rapture will include all the saints that are living right now. <clears throat> all the saints, when Jesus Christ comes back to get the church, it will involve all the saints. Not only that, but the rapture will include, and then it will involve only the saints. Do you see that? It will involve only the saints. Do you know there will be many fine and moral upstanding citizens we that friends of ours there'll be a lot a lot of people that live as good of a moral life as you do but they'll not go when Jesus comes they'll not, they'll not lose gravity when Jesus comes why will they why will they not go with us when Jesus comes you know why they won't go because they're not ready because they're not ready 
Jesus said, Be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. I want to ask you again, are you ready? We, we think that we are. A lot of people say, well, I, I, think, that I'm, I'm, I think that I'm ready. That's crazy. How can you just think that you're ready? You can know that you're ready. Yes. You, you can know that you're ready. I, I would hate to go through life thinking that I was okay. I would hate to go through life telling people, well, I, I think I'm ready. You know what? You can know that you're ready. And I want to tell you this morning, if you're not ready, you can get ready. If you're not ready, you can still get ready today. You can get ready for this, this fabulous event that's mentioned here in this scripture when Jesus Christ comes back. I've heard, I've heard people say, foolishly say, I'm going to get saved, but not right now. I'm going to make things right, but not today. Can I tell you what will happen to you? Can I tell you what will happen to you? You'll wake up in hell one day. You'll wake up in hell one day, and God said, I've told you time and time again, Amen. and you would not listen. You kept turning a deaf ear, and you would not repent. Are you ready today? Are you ready for this event that's going to take place? We've preached it so long and we've talked about it so long, we've gotten to a place that we just don't even believe it. But I want to tell you it's going to happen one day. It's going to happen just like the Bible says. It's going to play out just like the Scripture says. Jesus Christ one day is, He's still going to come back. You say, Preacher, I've heard that ever since I was a kid. Well, you ain't got no excuse then. Yeah. We'll be without excuse that day. That's right. They'll not be, you say, well, they'll not be no arguing with Jehovah God. They'll not be no arguing with the creator of the world. We'll not be able to do that. Let me ask you this morning. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? Only you can answer that truthfully. You're the only one that can answer that truthfully. We find here that the rapture will include only the saints. Don't just, don't just think that you're ready. Know that you are. Know that you're know that you're that you're ready to go. Jesus said there, therefore be ye also ready. Be ready. Jesus said, be ready. Are you ready? We find here that not only, we, not only that, but we see that the, the power that's involved in this event, there will be the power of the resurrection. Be of the power of the resurrection when the, when those, the spirits that, that went on, to the, as the Bible says, to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. We're going to lay this body in the grave one day. And this spirit, this inward man that Jesus Christ has saved, the, the, this inward person that the Lord Jesus Christ paid, his, paid his, our sin debt for, he says that it's going to come back. We'll see the power that's involved. There will be the power of the resurrection. The same God who moved in this power that created this world is one day going to move in power and He's going to resurrect. The, the Bible says the sleeping dead. Those that are resting in the Lord. I want to ask you this morning, are, are you ready? Are you ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air? We see here that there will be the power of the resurrection. Let's notice the promise that's involved in this event. There's the, there's the promise of the rescue. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 2, 2, Where in times past we walked according to the course of this world and, a, and according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh 
in the children of disobedience. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. There's the promise of the rescue. Do you know what? We, we think that we're fighting other people in this world, but we're really not. Our enemy is the prince and the power of the air. We'll not have to fight any more of those old temptations. We'll not have to fight any more of, of those things that we were tempted to do. He's going to rescue us from the prince and the power of the air. No more, no more evil thoughts, no more unclean thoughts, but pure thoughts. Let me ask you this, this morning. Do you ever have unclean thoughts? Do you ever have just those old wicked thoughts? You can't really control those. They just come. But you know what the good thing about it is? Greater is He that's in you than He that's in this world. Amen. You can, come, you can come overcome any temptation. You can overcome any trial. Anything that's this old world and anything that this old, that old devil. I hate him, don't you? Anything that he can throw our way, we can overcome it. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Greater is he that's in us. Than he that's in the world. So preacher. I, I, just, I struggle with things all the time. We all do. We're all human. We all struggle. We've not arrived yet. We all struggle with things. But you can overcome those struggles. You don't have to give in to temptations. You say, well, I, I just give in to them all the time and I've been doing it for years. Well, there's maybe a reason for that. Maybe you've never really been saved. I don't know. I've heard people say, well, I, I've got a child that's... I, they made a profession when they was a teenager or when they was a child, but they've not been to church in 50 years. I, I wouldn't go on that. I would make my eternal destiny on making a child like faith whenever I was a kid and there was no change that ever produced and there was no, no fruit ever come from that. I wouldn't trust that. I would not trust that. I would trust in Jesus. I'd make sure that everything was right between me and God. Hey, this is eternity. It's nothing to play with. I mean, whenever you're playing with eternity, you're, you're flirting with disaster. There's nothing to play with. Are you ready? Jesus is coming back. I believe He is. Do you believe He is? Amen. Do you believe Jesus is coming back? Amen. Let me ask you as we stand, are you ready? If you're not ready, you need to get ready today. If you're not ready, you can, you can be ready today. He's long-suffering with us. Maybe He, sh maybe he showed you today. Maybe, maybe He's knocked on your heart's door this morning and you realize that you're not a Christian. You realize that you're not a child of God. You know, on different occasions, especially one that I remember so distinctly in the Word of God. I remember Jesus meeting a, a very religious man one day. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. Actually, he was the man in charge. He was over 70 other people. Very religious man. I mean, this man, I believe that he thought that he was going to go to heaven. I really believe he did. And, he, and Jesus struck up a conversation with him. And he got to talking to him and, and he told him, he said, you know, that which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. And he told him, he said, Nicodemus, you've got to be born again. He didn't understand what Jesus was saying. He said, how can a man be born again when he's old like I am? He said, can he enter into the second time in his, into his mother's womb and be born again? What are you talking about? You've got to have a spiritual birth. 
He said, that which is spirit is spirit. He said, you've got to be born again, Nicodemus. There's got to be a change on the inside of you. Have there been a change on the inside of you? Are you ready? If there's not been a change, you're not ready. Nicodemus wasn't ready. But I believe he got ready, don't you? I believe he got ready when he had an encounter with the Son of God when Jesus told him, you've got to be born again. If you're not ready this morning, why don't you get ready? Why don't you get ready today? Don't wait till next Sunday. We may not even be here. Did you hear me? We may not be here next Sunday. I'll tell you one thing. There will be a Sunday that we're not here. There will be a Sunday that we're not. None of us will be here. While Brother Gary leads us in a song this morning, why don't you come this morning and ask Jesus Christ to come in your heart and save you this morning. If you're not ready, He wants you to be ready. And He wants you to be ready today. While we sing, why don't you come right now? All to Jesus this morning and you just it was just a happenstance that you're here maybe you're maybe you're a church member here I, I don't know maybe it's, maybe you just come today that's and you just come every once in a while maybe you just show up when you feel like it there's a lot of days I come and I don't feel like it I've told my wife some time ago do I have to go today <laughs> No, I didn't have to go. But there's a desire there to go. There's a, there's, a, there's a yearning there to go. To be with God's people. Can I tell you, if, if you're a, maybe you're a member here. and Maybe you're a leader in this church. I don't know who, what you are or what you do. But maybe you just come every once in a while. You need to come to this altar this morning. You, you need to fall in love with Jesus again is what you need to do. This isn't, this isn't part-time. This isn't a part-time thing. Being a, being a child of God is not part-time. I'm, I'm, I'm a child of God on Sunday today, but not for a few more Sundays. I, I'll show up again sometime, but just, just, be, just be patient with me. Well, I'm trying to be. And God's trying to be patient with you. But if you show up just whenever you take a notion to show up, I'm talking to those that claim to be a Christian. And you just come every once in a while. And there's nothing physically wrong with you. I want to tell you there's something spiritually wrong with you. You need to come back to God. Maybe you're here this morning and you're just eat up with religion like Nicodemus was. But you really don't know Jesus. Why would Jesus say in Matthew 24, why would Jesus say, many will say unto me in that day? Why would he say that? You know why I believe he said that? Because I believe that many of a person that sits on a church pew will not go to heaven. He wasn't talking to the world. You read the context of the scripture. He wasn't talking to the world. He was talking to religious people. Talking to religious people. I want to tell you this thing is, this is serious business. Where you're going to spend eternity, do you care? Oh, I care where I'm going to go, don't you? Jesus wants to give you eternal life today. 
I want to sing one more stanza of this song this morning. If you don't know that you've got eternal life today, if you don't know that you're going to heaven right now, why don't you come to this altar as we sing one more stanza of this song? Come right on, right now. Brother Gary, thank you this morning. Uh, be praying for our va vacation Bible school this week. It'll be starting in the morning, and we're excited about all these uh, children that we're going to have to uh, that we're going to be part of this week. And uh, you know, a lot of these children that we're going to have for the next week uh, are a lot of unchurched children, uh, children that that don't go to church anywhere, and we get to present the gospel to them. We get them in here by all the food and the games and everything that we do, but the main thing is to share the gospel with those children. And uh, boy, I'm excited about uh, that we're able to, to take part of that and do that. So pray for, pray for our VBS uh, uh, this week and just pray that God would just uh, intervene and He would have His wonderful way. Uh, Brother Earl, I don't know if everybody knows that Dwight and Jeannie's grandchildren were born early this morning yes. at 25 weeks. So just continue to pray for them, David and Olivia. Uh, one pound, 14 ounces, I think, what they were. So yeah. she's yeah. going to be in the hospital for the next month or two, I'd yeah. say. Who, who remember, yeah, remember this? Yes, remember this. Everybody remember this. Yes. Prayer the children. Amen. Brother Frank, could you dismiss this, dear brother, in a word of prayer? Dear Father, we thank you again for this uh, <coughs> day that we come and worship you and just to pray that you would be with each family represents here. Be with us as we go out through our week, that we would uh, be the servants, Father, that we would be uh, the ambassadors for you, that uh, the people we come into contact, Father, that they would realize that there's something that we have that they want, and that is you, Jesus. Father, again, we just thank you and we praise you. We just uh, ask that you would forgive us for where we fail you. So in Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. It's on, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I'm glad we was already off there. <laughs> You're not supposed to say anything about that, okay?
for another thing to make Brother Earl. And Lord God is bless this friend as we pray. And just let it be for your glory this week. As our little children. Maybe I will get saved this week. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. disciples and broke bread. He said, take eat, for this is my body.
after they took the bread, Jesus, he spoke to his disciples and they took the juice. And he said, this is my blood that was shed for you. He said, take it and drink y'all. Oh, Lord, again, we come to thee and thanks, Lord. We're so thankful that you sent your Son to shed his blood for our sins, Lord, and to uh, have salvation, Lord. We thank you for your church here that you provided for so 80 something years, Lord, and we just ask that you continue to bless this church. Bless us, Lord, for anyone here that didn't know your Son as their Savior. We ask that you be with us. Help them to understand and help them to accept that fact. Well, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.